What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. I know it's in a little bit, but in today's video, we're going to talk about how you can integrate and begin to dip your toes in SwiftUI in your UI kit app, specifically with a UI hosting configuration. Before we jump into things, make sure you've got Xcode 14 beta, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new. Let's create a new project and walk through a quick demo. So we're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Make sure that your language, of course, is Swift, and we're going to set our interface a storyboard, aka UI Kit. And let's call this UI Kit Loves Swift UI, since this is a pretty interesting way to jump into the world of Swift UI without destroying your existing UI Kit app. So we'll expand our window here, and let me just pick a simulator up here. We'll go with the 13, which it looks like is already selected. And I'll just give our application a build and run so we're not sitting here waiting for uh, it to load. And while that's uh, doing its thing and running over there, let's uh, make sure the size is proper. Let's jump into our view controller. Now, what we essentially are going to look at is how you can leverage SwiftUI to fill out the contents of a collection view cell, which is otherwise pretty verbose in UI kits. And we're going to do it in a pretty simple way. So I already took the liberty of writing out a collection view. I'm just going to paste that in just for the sake of time. I'll go over it very quickly. It's nothing more than a very, very basic collection view. So we create a layout. We set some basic layout properties. We set up a background color and we register the base UI collection view cell. Now we want to add this to the view hierarchy as well as create our UI hosting configuration, which is the cool part of this video. So we'll just add this as a sub view and I'm also going to add some constraints. So I'll just go ahead and activate some constraints. So on the collection view, we're going to say the leading anchor is a constraint equal to the leading anchor. And I'll just quickly copy and paste this a few times here. We'll do safe area layout guide, top anchor, as well as the bottom anchor. Don't forget to change your constraints on the left hand side here. We'll make this trailing top and bottom respectively. And I think on the collection view, I need to also set the translates constraints into auto resizing masks to false. Give this guy a run and we won't actually see anything quite yet here because we haven't set up that uh, delegate in data source for this guy. But let me actually set a color so we can actually see that something indeed has been added to the hierarchy. We should see a yellow blob. There we go. And let's set up the collection views cell. So we're going to make sure that we assign the delegates and the data source. We actually don't even need the delegate, but out of habit, we'll just do it. And then down here in a extension, we will conform to both protocols where we will look at the hosting config momentarily. So bear with me here. And what we're going to do is we'll just hard code, uh, hard code number of items. So here we're going to want number of items. We'll just return one and sell for item where the good stuff happens. So first and foremost, if you have a custom cell that you registered, you can do this inside of there as well. But since we registered the base cell, we just want to dequeue it so uh, our app doesn't actually throw a assertion and crash. I believe the identifier I used is just cell. Let's just confirm up here. And now we want to return this cell. And we'll just return it here. And this is where the really cool stuff happens. So let's say we have a custom cell. Traditionally, what you would do is, you know, inside a subclass, you would have things like a UI label, an image view, um, a switch, what have you, different UI kit sub views. And you would want a view model to configure this cell. You might attach a delegate and data source for feeding in data and as well as getting information out. Now, more modern cells have something called a content configuration. I believe this is available as of, I want to say, uh, iOS 13. Let's see how accurate I am. Ah, it's 14, actually. Now, content configurations are an easier way to configure your cells for different states and uh, uh, environment changes, so things like selected, highlighted. Now, this was previously also UI kit based, but now we have a UI hosting configuration, and I believe it's just a part of uh, a part of UI kit, but perhaps it's not. So let me actually import Swift UI, and here what we want is a UI hosting configuration. And very similar to anyone who's touched Swift UI is inside here, we just want to return a view. This block here is a view builder. So let's actually do that. 
So we're going to maybe throw a H stack inside of here. And inside of this H stack, we are going to have a few things. Let's start off with a image with a system name of perhaps a star. And we are going to then next to this put a V stack inside of this. We'll have a label that says favorites. We're going to give this a chunkier font size of title. So it looks like a, uh, you know, title of our cell. We want another text right below it, a label and here. And let me just fix this alignment since it's going to bother me. I'll say uh, we forgot a parenthesis. That's why it's yelling at me. Uh, we'll say see all your liked content like so we'll make this a body and for this v stack we'll also toss some padding on it and finally a spacer next to it now go ahead and give this guy a run and we should see something pretty interesting we see that we now have the cell up here we have the star as well as our labels the coolest thing about this in my opinion is Building out a pretty custom laid out cell is pretty verbose, but a lot of my applications personally, and you know, for those of you that do any amount of client work is, you know, you can't just scrap the whole thing and start building all your views in Swift UI. There are considerations for which iOS version you want to support. Uh, maybe you're supporting all the way back to, you know, 11, 12, 13. You can't just do this, but for some cases, you might want to go ahead and say, hey, if I'm using iOS 16 and up, you can actually use this. The benefit is you don't have to destroy your existing UI kit app. It is super simple to actually build this out and use. And especially for layouts that are quite complex in terms of their axes, uh, you don't need to set up constraints. You don't need to use frames. It is a pretty big win. Now the label alignment looks a little bad. So let me just fix this up here. This should have a uh, argument of alignment and we'll do leading here. And I'm also gonna set a background color on it so we can actually see what is going on let me just say content view background color is a system pink like so now when is it not ideal to use obviously subjective but what i would recommend is if you have cells that are doing some pretty crazy things like um, video players perhaps av players if you have web views that you're somehow caching and you know reusing in a pool for pretty intricate stuff you'd be surprised that people actually do that because there are some very very nitty-gritty use cases I don't recommend doing this, but for anything that is uh, quote unquote simple in terms of your components, if you want a label, an image view, a switch, uh, which Swift UI calls a toggle, uh, form components, text fields, this is a no brainer. It's pretty easy to use. And the last thing I'll mention here is before uh, we wrap this up, if you want to make sure that you can actually use something, you can say, hey, if this thing, uh, if iOS 16 is available, I can go ahead and use this, otherwise go ahead and configure your cell. Now I know the one thing that you know I've heard people complain about is this is kind of annoying, you have to support both of them, but the idea here is let's say you support two iOS versions back, once iOS 17 drops next year, you can just double click this else block, boom, delete it, and you're golden, you're good to go. Now, obviously this is running in Xcode 14 beta two, as well as iOS 16 beta. So it'll be really interesting to see um, any bugs or any things that people discover while using this. One thing that I haven't tested yet that I want to is uh, things like animations inside of this. Uh, because we're inside of UI kit land, we don't have that much control over states and bindings. So one thing I'm fascinated to do a bit of a deep dive on is how much can I get away with using things like matched geometry effects, um, things like did tap and did appear, because what happens if I want to add a, a particular action when I perhaps tap on this? So we can say on tap gesture, and it definitely is available to us, but how do we get this out to our controller? Now, obviously you can use a delegate pattern of some sort, but It'll be interesting to figure this out. My, my hot take is if you create a subview of, or a uh, inherited subclass, I should say, of the collection view here, we can say final class uh, foo cell of this guy. Inside of here, you can have a delegate which you can use to get an action out. Uh, and I'm kind of going on a tangent about this video since 
this is not supposed to be super specific, but you can use the content configuration to get the content in and you can still leverage the on tap gesture to get your action out. But um, it's, a, it's an interesting middle ground between UI kit and Swift UI. So let me know if you ran into any issues in the comments down below. That is all I've got for you guys today. I know I haven't made a video in quite a while, but I'm going to make my best attempt to get back on a schedule. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new here before clicking away, make sure you subscribe for more iOS content. Drop a comment for that sweet YouTube algorithm. Like down below as well. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.